What's up America? This is Kim and Neil with Geauga Farms Academy. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the fundamentals of shooting. The idea behind this video guys is we've got lots of individual, each fundamental broken up and it's in a playlist and you guys are more than welcome to go check those out. Definitely good stuff there. This is for those people who just want to watch one video and kind of just have a general understanding. Now, big disclaimer, right? This is not training. This is not training. <laughs> this is not like I just bought a gun and I'm just going to watch this video and then I'm going to go out and shoot, okay? Uh, you need to get training in person from another human being who's competent in shooting. No replacement for that, okay? But uh, kind of down and dirty, one video, the fundamentals of shooting. Let's get started. <laughs> And guys, again, big reminder on the universal gun safety rules. You always want to know your target and what's behind it. You want to treat all guns as if they're loaded. You want to always point your muzzle in a safe direction. And you never want to put your finger on the trigger till you're ready to shoot. First and foremost, one of the biggest mistakes people are going to make right off the bat when it comes to the, the fundamentals and first getting in the pistols is they're going to buy their quote unquote concealed carry pistol because that's their main goal. Uh, this little fella here comes in all different varieties we're not going to get into that however this is not the tool to learn how to shoot with and learn the fundamentals this is a much larger physical frame gun than this guy great for concealed carry but we need to learn the fundamentals of shooting first with a proper sized gun so that we can master everything that we need to on this before moving to a gun that's going to be much more of a challenge to shoot for any level of shooter. First and foremost, uh, going over stuff that you don't need. This happens to have a light on it. You certainly don't need that. The less crap you put on your gun to begin with, the better off you're gonna be. Now, I said that we wanted a larger gun, and here's why. One of the very first things we wanna be able to do is get the proper grip on this gun. Because if you can't hold the gun properly, you can never shoot it properly. So, think about this logically for a minute. This slide is gonna reciprocate, it's gonna come back. There's a lot of mass in there. So you have the round going off, and you have the slide coming back and forth. So this gun wants to move back like this from that mass of that slide and from the pressure of the gun. So ideally, if I could shoot the gun like this straight on, that's how I would do it. But unfortunately, I don't have the Jedi yet, so I can't do that. So what I want to do is get as high up on the gun as possible. So I want the webbing of my hand right in the back of this, what we call the beaver tail, the tang, nice and high. So there's no space whatsoever in there. Then underneath here, I certainly don't want any space in here either. I want to make sure that that part of my grip is all the way up. So all the way in the front of the front strap of the gun and all the way up on the back strap of the gun. Now, what am I going to do with this guy? Well, I want to cover as much surface area as possible. Just like uh, with the tire on the ground, the bigger, wider the tire, the more surface area we can cover, technically the more traction we can get. So what I want to make sure that I do is I want to take this guy, my thumb here, and move it up out of the way. Because if I don't, I'll show you from this angle, when I cover my hand here, you're going to notice that there's going to be a big gap in here. And no matter what I do, because of my thumb here, I can't get any closer. So I want to make sure that's up and out of the way. Then I take this guy here, and I fill the space. Now you're going to notice one thing, really important, you guys. I'm taking my hand, and I'm torquing my wrist forward. That's going to give me good alignment so that my thumb points towards the target. Looks something like this. Okay? Real quick, too, a lot of people are worried about the slide and slide bite and all this other nonsense. The only way you get slide butt is by taking your thumb and sticking it up back behind the slide. That's going to be a bad day because, of course, the slide comes back. However, if my hand is touching the slide, for example, if I take my thumb here and press it in there as hard as I can and then release the slide, no big deal. So don't be afraid of the slide. Get your hand nice and high, both hands, nice good grip, okay? Now when we talk about grip itself, my right hand is not technically going to hold it if I'm a right-handed shooter. So I just tied it as my left hand because my left hand has only one job to do, to drive that gun out there and hold it there. This guy, this hand, has to press that trigger, which we're going to talk about in a second. Nice and smooth. So if I'm gripping the heck out of it, I won't be able to get the good, top, solid pressure straight back because my hand wants to turn and move around. So this guy holds that nice and steady, so that allows me to move my finger and manipulate it properly. Next, we're going to talk about sight alignment. Sight alignment is how your sights line up and sight picture is how the relationship between your sight alignment and the target itself. Most people make the mistake of focusing on the target and that's not what we want. What we want to do is we want to have we want to focus here on the front sight so your target and your back sight should be 
kind of blurry and the front sight should be crystal clear. Most sites are three dot sites. They have two two dots in the back and they have one one in the in the front. And what you want to do is line them up perfectly. You want to make sure that the the space in between is perfect and it's nice and level. All right, now we're going to talk about the granddaddy of all fundamentals and that is trigger control, okay? So make sure we're clear here. Uh, trigger control is very important because this is the one part where my hand's actually going to, get to begin to move. And what happens a lot of time is that we have what's called sympathetic response, meaning that when one of my fingers moves, they all want to move together. And what that does is that causes the gun to move, which we don't want, okay? Again, remember I told you about that left hand? That's going to help it. But here's the deal. On this trigger, there's going to be various triggers. No matter what gun you buy, they're all going to be a little different. Uh, on this M&P, it has a very nice trigger right, side, right outside of the box. But what's going to happen here with this trigger is I'm going to have a little bit of take up. That's that uh, kind of free play in the trigger. And we're going to hit the wall. Okay, the wall is where, you, where things start happening. Okay, we're going to hit that wall. And now we're going to incrementally add pressure. It's real simple. Hit the wall, pause, make sure our sights are lined up, focus on our front sight, we're good to go. And then I slowly add pressure onto that trigger until it goes bang. Okay, again, take the slack out, hit that wall, slowly add pressure, make sure I'm focused on my front sight, boom. Okay, down and dirty, real simple. If you can do that with that trigger, keep in mind when we talk about this whole thing, if you can align your sights like Kim just said and press the trigger without misaligning the sights, you can be a world-class shooter. The most overlooked fundamental is follow through. The easiest way to describe follow through is thinking of a baseball player. When they're swinging, they don't just hit the ball and stop. They follow through with a swing and it's equally as important in shooting. So let me show you follow through. I present my gun out, I shoot, the gun recoils, I find my sight alignment, focus on my front sight, and then I follow through. So if you shoot once, you're gonna have two sight packages and sight packages are lining up your sights and focusing on your front sight. So every time you shoot, you're always going to have a follow through. You're going to have a sight package, then you're going to shoot, and you're going to find your sights again. And that is the completion of the shooting process, not when it goes bang. People get wrapped around the axle a lot on stance. Now, in my opinion, there's no such thing as stance because ultimately, if I was really in a defensive position, I'm going to run somewhere, and where I stop, I just want a good, stable shooting position. But if we have the time to set up a perfect stance, what I would do is square off with the target, and I want to get into an athletic stance as if I was a... Uh, tennis player or a shortstop, somebody where I might have to go either direction. Okay, my knees are bent, my weight is forward. You're going to hear the term nose over toes. doesn't really matter. All I'm saying is I'm, I'm leaning forward like there's a bar here. So when I drive my gun out and the gun recoils, I can manage all that. I can move from target to target. I can move my whole body around. I could run over there if I have to, but I have a good solid stance. What you don't want to end up having to do is standing up very erect and then you end up, there's this rocking motion where you're trying to keep your balance. It's hard enough to get all these things right and then to do that off balance, it's never gonna work. One more time, this does not in any way replace actual training, but to give you kind of a down and dirty quick overview of the fundamentals of shooting in one take, there you go. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, share. We always love hearing from you. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube. Also follow us on Instagram, on Facebook, and we put all of our premium content on Patreon. Until next time, remember, it's, it's always, always better, better to be, be judged, judged by 12, 12 than carried, carried by 6. six. I like to show these yoga pants because I get a lot of comments on these. They're actually 511 ones with a, a belt loop, so you can actually wear your gun with your yoga pants. I did a whole review on them and stuff, but I get a lot of people like, wow, those yoga pants, you're wearing a gun with them. Let me see, I have my gun on. The only thing I don't really like is that they don't have a pocket. But if you guys are interested too, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Facebook because I put a lot of how I carry. I know a lot of people ask, you know, how do you stay feminine and carry? So check us out there.